Turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, please. We're to be ready in season and out. Amen? Amen. Amen? You know, Jesus said, come out from among them and be separate. And don't touch what's unclean and I'll be a dad to you and you can be my child. And then I'll show you the ways. There has to be a willing desire to not only want to please God, but to do his will. If there isn't a willing to desire, then there's something wrong. We have a free will. But in that will, we should be exchanging our will for his will every single day. Just like we should be exchanging our presence for his presence. Amen? Amen. You know, the word of God is true. In, verse, in chapter 12, in verse 7, it says something very powerful. It says, and war broke out where? In heaven. And Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. In other words, the third heaven, which is a representation of God's presence, the where God's throne was at. He said that the dragon and his angels were no longer allowed in there. There was a war that broke out because of rebellion. And it says something powerful. It says <clears throat> in verse 9, so the dragon, the great dragon, was cast out. Now he begins to explain the great dragon. He says that he is a serpent of old. He's called the devil, and he's called Satan, associated with adversary. Who, do, who does what? Deceives the whole world. Is that still going on? Yeah. Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear. That's how he manipulates. It says that he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Again, the dragon and the fallen angels, he, he was called, the, the dragon was called the serpent of old, the devil, Satan. He was cast out of the third heaven, sent to the earth and its atmosphere and associated with the second heaven and the first heaven. The second heaven is where Satan's throne is at. He is still deceiving the whole world and he cont continues to deceive the whole world. That's his job. <laughs> he's a deceiver. He's been deceived and he's still going to deceive. And one of the things that people fall into all the time is deception. And the, the, people are always looking for an answer in one way or another. They're looking for an answer of escape. The whole world is looking for the answer of escape. Es escape from self. Escape from bondage. Escape from sickness. Escape from debt. Escape from everything. The world is looking for escape. And many times they don't even know what they're trying to escape from, but they're just trying to find a place out. And only Jesus can provide that way of escape. But it takes a price. And that price is cooperation amen it's cooperation listen you could be in a boat that sank and a ship can come by to come and pick you up you have a choice to get on that ship or not does everybody get it so in that free will arena we want to exchange our will for his will so that when that ship comes to rescue us we're doing his will not ours because only those doing his will can actually get on so there must be a willing desire. In Isaiah 14. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> <clears throat> Isaiah 14, 12. It 
Is everybody there? Isaiah 14, verse 12, and let's speak it together. <clears throat> oh, how you have fallen from where? Heaven. Now see, he's confirming what Revelation 12 says. Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, who? Lucifer. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, this is why God removed them. I will ascend into heaven. Why was he going to ascend into heaven? Because he was a praise and worship leader of the universe, and the earth was known as the center of the universe. So the earth was in, inhabited by angels and Lucifer, and praise was going forth from the earth to the universe. Does everybody get it? And so here Lucifer was there. In fact, we've got to remember Lucifer was the first uh, what, God's right-hand man, you might say. He saw all creation. He saw everything. He saw everything being created. He was there with the Lord. And it says here, he says, well, I will ascend into, verse 13, and you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. Would you call this pride? Yeah. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the what? Most high God. Well, God had an answer from him. He says, you're going to be brought down to hell, homie. The lowest depths of the pit. And he says, and those who will see you will gaze at you and consider saying, is this the man, the demonic force who made the earth tremble who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities who did not open the house of the prisoners all the kings of the nations all of them sleep in glory everyone in his own house but you are cast out of your grave why because he'll be cast into the lake of fire like an abominable branch like the garment of those who are slain thrust through with a sword who go down to the stones of the pit like a corpse trotten underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people. The broad of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children. Those are those who serve Satan. He calls their children. Because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with what? Cities again. Nimrod was one who did those. Nimrod was a Nephilim. He was a servant of darkness. He was the king of the earth at one time. Remember he tried to build the tower? They called it the Babylon Tower, the Tower of Babel. Well, God had to come down and shut it down. <clears throat> Lucifer was a praise and worship leader of the universe. His cities were established or inhabited by angels what we might call pre-Adamic beings, until Lucifer declared himself as God and became corrupt. Then he was removed on the earth because he was on the earth, and then the Lord shut down the earth because at one time it was considered perfect. And then it became chaos. And when it became chaos, the Lord shut it down and kicked everyone out. That's what we call the Ice Age. And go to Genesis 1. <clears throat> So we had the perfect world, the chaos world, and then the present world that we're in now. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So we know that the first thing that God created was time. And then he created the heavenlies and the angels and so forth. Then he created matter. The earth was without form. Why would, the, would God create the earth without form? No. He creates things perfect. Amen? 
Why is it created without form? Because this was now when the earth was shut down. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So God was getting ready to redo something. Remember, the earth was shut down. It already existed. At one time, it was perfect. Then it became chaos because of the rule of Satan. Has everybody got it? And so the Lord set, shut it down. We called it the Ice Age. <clears throat> and then God said, let there be. The word let there be does not mean create. It means restore. So God was getting ready to do what? Restore. But he wasn't going to do the restoring without the Holy Spirit. It says that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, was hovering over the earth. So he's the one that brings restoration, doesn't he? <clears throat> and so he says, let there be light, and there was light. And you'll find that through uh, verse 1 to 26, everywhere it says, let there be. Then it says in verse 6, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And then it says in verse 9, And let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. Why? Because it was froze, wet. Is everybody okay? And you'll see in verse 11, Then let the earth bring forth grass. Why? Because the sun was now shining again. Because it was, it was protected. It was clouded. That firmament was not allowing the sun to shine through. <clears throat> All these things are associated with let there be, let there be. <clears throat> and in verse 14, he said, and let there be lights in the firmaments. In other words, so that people can see the stars and the heavens. God didn't create these. He already did them already. He, <clears throat> he was allowing now those that are presence on the earth to be able to see the heavenlies again. <clears throat> and let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was. And then it says something very powerful. It says, <clears throat> and let them, verse 27, and let the waters abound with abundance of living creatures. Now, that didn't happen yet. Amen? Because God had to create, again, animals. Because everything was froze. Everything was dead. And verse 21, thank you. So God created sea creatures. Why? He had to restore them. Does everybody get it? Amen. And every living thing that moves. And then God said, let us make man in our image. In other words, he was creating man. I want you to see something very powerful because the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth. And the Holy Spirit was the one that was getting to take something to salvage it. That's the same thing of salvation. Only the Holy Spirit, he is the mover. So in this, we can see every area where it says, let it be means to restore something that was salvaged. Now it's being salvaged, isn't it? And of course, the first thing he talks about is, let there be light. Well, light is also associated with life. So we see that there was light in the skies and the waters and plants, and then he created, then many creatures were created and so forth. Again, the Holy Spirit's operation, he is, he's the operational manager of salvation, restoring, renewing and resetting. That's his operation. And one of the things that God is doing right now is bringing us into a place of renewal. There was a renewing going on tremendously. And in this, they're renewing, there'll be a refreshing. And there'll be that resetting again. Everything's going to be back into divine order. That's what he's working on right now. In other words, all of Genesis 1 is basically a summary of God's plan. And the end result is to maintain a state of renewing. That's for me and you. You and I must maintain a state of renewal. Renewing. It's refreshing all the time. That's our responsibility. 
in Romans chapter 12. Everyone say the renewing. You know, in every time, everything, there is a season and a time. And sometimes there's a long season, and in that season, there's sub-seasons. And there's certain things that God wants to establish in that season. And for me and you, there's a specific thing in every season that God wants us to establish. And he will not allow us to advance to the next season unless we complete what's in that first one. So it's important that you and I cooperate with everything that God is doing. The more we rebel against it, we can't enter the next season. We stay stuck and stagnant. And we become stinky and miserable. Hello? In Romans chapter 12, is everybody in there? In verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the what? Mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, surrender yourself. Jesus gave us the formula, deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. Picking up the cross is associated with fight, battle. Because you can't fa follow without a battle. Present yourselves as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. Everyone say, it's my responsibility, my responsibility. to present, to present my, spirit, my spirit, soul, body, and will yeah. to the Lord. Every day. That's our responsibility. And verse 2, and it says, do, me, do not be what? Conform to what? This world. But be transformed by the what? Renewing of your, your mind or your thoughts that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So without renewing, can you do the will of God? No, that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get you to a place where you stop renewing. Because when you stop renewing, you stop refreshing. And when you stop that, you begin to drift and fall out of position. You are no longer in divine order. You're in carnal order. Amen? Oh, glory. Renewing. is. Remember, we're coming from a salvage state of being, right, to a, re, a new refreshing state. If you look at the tabernacle of God, because everything revolves around the tabernacle. You have the outer court, the holy place, and the holy place. I'll always speak about those places. Because everything revolves around it. Everything revolves around God's presence, his tabernacle, and his truth. Everything. So the outer court is considered the place of salvage. That's where you and I were saved, salvation. So everybody got it. The outer court is the what? Salvage place. There's another place called the holy place. The holy place is called the renewing place. That is the refreshing place. And the most holy place is considered the victory place. So there's a place where you and I must maintain a renewing state of being. That means living in the second chamber of the tabernacle. And without that, you cannot be refreshed. You cannot maintain a renewing arena. You can't reset things. Everything stays stagnant on the outer court. And that's when the enemy loves to get believers after they become saved. He wants to keep them in the outer court knowing he's no harm to them. They are no, they're, he's, they're not a danger to him at all. And he doesn't care if people get saved. Do you understand that? Because there are those who have been saved that turn around and serve the devil. He said, fine, if they stay in the outer court, I'll drag them out when I need them. Because yeah. the closest thing to the outer court is outer darkness. The only way you and I can maintain and live is to live in the holy place and the most holy place. And the most holy place is victory. So one of the things the devil wants to always do is prevent you from getting into that presence where there's renewing and refreshing. Is everybody okay? Yes. Titus 3. Titus chapter 3. <clears throat> 
The renewing. We are in a season of renewing. That's why you're sensing more and more exposure, more and more conviction. In fact, there's more and more responsibility now. There's judgment in the house of God. All of these things are establishing and continuing to go. One of the things that the Lord said, he said, I'm going to return. We, are no, we know that we are the generation of the Lord's return. But how is he going to return first? He's going to first return through the body of Christ before he himself returns. That's why what he's going to do, he's going to, there's going to be the early and latter rain. There's going to be more of a point out of the spirit and the anointing is going to flow through more of the body of Christ. Those who are in position. But if you're still approving wickedness and still uh, associated with people, places, and things that are not approved by God, then you're opening the door. Amen? Amen. If you're still living for the will of yourself instead of the will of God, then there's then you're out of position. Oh, hallelujah. In Titus chapter 3 and verse 1, it says, Remind them to be what? Subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once what? Foolish. foolish. People are still foolish associations with people, places, and things that are not pleasing to God. That's called foolish. In fact, I just call it plain, simple, stupid. You'd have to be an idiot to do those things and not to want to please God. Amen? Amen. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But when the kindness of the love of our God and our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and regeneration and what? Renewing of what? The Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, which means his plan, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to what? Affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But do what? Avoid. Avoid what? Foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. <clears throat> Reject a divisive man after a first and second admiration and knowing that such a person is what? Warped. He's not like plum nuts. And sinning, being what? Self-condemned. Wow. So he's warning us. He's saying, look, okay, here it is. Let's maintain the renewing by the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a regeneration for me and you. Just like he did for when God when the Holy Spirit was hovering over the earth. The same thing still happening. It continues to happen. It is the Holy Spirit's operation to bring renewal to me and you. But there must be a desire to cooperate and obey. There must be a willingness to cut loose of everything of your past. He was in Christ as a new creation. You can't be a new creation in Christ if you're still holding on to your past. You must let go. Why? Because you're still trying to control your past, live from your past. God wants you to live from the future to the present and not from your past to the present. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So in this, we see again, there's washing away. That's what the washing and the regeneration is. What is it? By exposing unapproved things that influence me and you. Things that God has not approved of. Things that influence me and you, God is exposing and removing like sin and so forth. So, and maintaining a state of mind or thoughts, attitude and motive and desires that are pleasing to God and not to the world. Remember, 
<clears throat> if you're not offensive to the world, you're offensive to God. Amen? If you're not offensive to the world, you're offensive to God. Because that means you're still a world pleaser and not a God pleaser. Psalm 24. So now, again, the washing of regeneration of the Holy Spirit is the washing away by exposing unapproved things that influence me and you. So is it our responsibility to remove those things that are displeasing to God? Yes. <clears throat> Psalm 24, the renewing. In verse 1, let's speak it. 1 through 6. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand in this what? Holy place. What chamber is the holy place? Second chamber. Does everybody get it? But he who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul or his desire to an idol. I mean, you know, you can be the worst idol. Nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord. How many of y'all want to be blessed? How many of y'all want to prosper? Okay. Then you got to maintain a clean hand and a pure heart. Amen. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him and who seek your face. Seeking him means seeking his presence. Clean hands and a pure heart allows access to the second chamber. The second chamber is a place for renewing and refreshing. Amen? Idols of self, will, desires, all of those things will prevent us from maintaining that position. You know, you and I are to labor unto the Lord, not unto self. We'll be, we should be willing to go the extra mile for the kingdom. Because we used to go the extra mile for the drugs, alcohol, the sex, drugs, rock and roll, and everything else. Amen? Now God is saying, will you go the extra mile for me? We used to go to the extra mile for work to make extra money. We used to go all of these extra miles for all worldliness instead of God. How many know God can restore it all? He can do far above all you could ever ask or think. That's all he's asking is that you trust him and believe him. That's what you need to ask every day. Lord, increase my faith. In fact, sometimes you need to just exchange your faith for the faith of the Lord. Lord, I exchange my faith for your faith. Amen. In Psalm 18. <clears throat> the renewing. <clears throat> In verse 20. It's like when you go out and buy a new car or something. And this car is nice, nice and clean, man, because they detail these cars, man, I'm telling you. You go to a used car lot or something, those cars all look brand new. They can have 300,000 miles on them. <laughs> they look brand new because they do a good job at detail. And then you bring the car home and you know, it's driving good, and it gets dirty. You go through the mud puddles, it gets rain on it. You haven't had a chance to clean it up, and it just doesn't seem new again. Spilled coffee on the inside, whatever it is. There's crumbs from the kids. There's this, there's that, whatever. Stuff left in the car. Man, it's like, oh, gosh. You, you, and, but you've been living in it, and it hasn't been affecting you so much until you finally get out. And then you, when you go back into the car, it's like, whoa, man, this is a mess. It's finally get caught up to you. You're like, you know what? This, this car needs to be renewed. It needs to be renewed. So you clean out the whole car. You clean out the inside. Make it smell nice again. Armor all it. Underarm it. You know. 
and you whack, you clean the outside, you put the shine on the rims, and it's like, whoa, yes. Now it's back to its original state. That's what God wants to do with me and you. The thing is, is that he hands you the scrub brush, the bucket. <laughs> he gives you the word, and he makes his presence available for us. Amen. So we're the ones that have to do that part. But he's waiting for us all the time so that we can be refreshed. Can we get around someone that, man, they were joyful and all kinds of other things, and then two days later they were miserable? Miserable. It's like, man, don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Go get refreshed in the presence of God. That's all they're doing is lacking God's presence, or they haven't exchanged their presence for his presence. You know? Remember, the presence of the Lord is everything. Everything. It's his presence that holds the other, the whole universe. It's everything. And his presence should be everything to you. Not your presence, his presence. Not your wife's presence or your husband's presence or your children's presence. His presence. Not your boss's presence or your pastor's presence. His presence. Amen? Amen? Psalm 1820, you there? Oh, glory, let's speak it. <laughs> Did I say 1820? Good. <laughs> the Lord what? He what? He rewarded me according to my what? Righteousness. And according to the what? Cleanness of my hands. How many of y'all want to be rewarded? People want to be rewarded without doing nothing. It's called false entitlement. Boy, is this world up on that now, man. The, uh, people think God owes them or the government owes them. False entitlement, narcissistic spirit. Verse 21. For he, I have kept the what? Ways of the Lord. He's going to tell you. Look at it. He's rewarded me because of the cleanness of my hands, the, the fruits of the righteousness. Because I've kept the ways of the Lord I've not, I, and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from my iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has what? Re recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. In other words, people don't, sometimes people, when they drift from God's presence, they forget that God sees it all and knows it all. They lose it. Righteousness is produced by maintaining a renewing state of being. I'm going to say that again. Righteousness is produced by maintaining a renewing state of being. Why? Because by renewing, maintaining a renewing state of being, you will become obedient. Amen? You'll become obedient to pursue the presence of God. You'll become obedient to declaring his words. And then he will reward you for being that obedient. Does everybody get it? Why? Because you're an individual that maintains a renewing all the time. I mean, let me share this with you that um, when I first got saved, <clears throat> and uh, there were times when I didn't want to go to fellowship. Jesus said to abide. That stuck with me. Abide, abide, abide. I know that he meant something very important, abide in his presence and in his word, which is truth. And I love the anointing of Christ. I love the anointing. And the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. You and I should love the anointing, and it's carried by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's his operation to keep us renewed. What does he want to renew us in? His presence. He wants to renew us with power. He wants to refresh us. He wants everything so that we stay in divine order, so that renewing in this presence keeps a reset state. It keeps a divine order state. Why? So God can constantly bless me and you. But the enemy messes with your thoughts. How many of y'all know that's where the battlefield is? He messes with your emotions. He's going to bring to you all the things that you've done, that you missed, or that you were emotionally burned in, in all these areas. 
guilt, condemnation, fear, lust. Lust is one of the highest emotions that mislead people. And lust is nothing but a, 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 a desire. Lust is a what? It's a desire. That's what it is. We can lust for the presence of God. Is that something good? Yeah, that's good. But there's another lust that's uh, not approved by God. But there is a high quality of a desire to want God's presence. God approves it. So you and I want to live a life that God approves of, not that God disapproves of. We want to make decisions that God approves of. We want to associate with people that God approves of, not that disapproves of. Look at you to go around in the world, you're going to see a lot of people that, dis, that God has disapproved of. It doesn't mean he doesn't love them, he, but he wants maybe me and you to give the truth to them so that they'll turn around and be approved by God. Amen? But it doesn't mean that you're going to, they're going to become your best friends. See, in the kingdom of God, there really are no friends. There's brothers and sisters. Does everybody get it? Friends will turn on you. Not that brothers and sisters won't. That's when they become a friend. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Righteousness, again, is produced by maintaining a renewing state of being by obedience to pursue the presence of God. Psalm 19. How many of y'all know that the law represents God's word? Psalm 7. I mean, verse 7, I'm sorry. Psalm 19. Let's speak it together. The law of the Lord is what? Perfect. Perfect. Converting the what? Soul. Converting the soul. Again, there's too many individuals that are in souls that have not been converted yet. There's partial conversion. There must be a full conversion. God will not allow you to advance until there's a specific level of conversion to your soul. And your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, even your desires. Amen. What's he trying to do? He's trying to get them converted so that com those are the things that are approving of God while you're continuing to remove the things that are disapproving to God. But that is your responsibility to cooperate with the word of God in the converting of the soul. When an individual's soul is not converted or reached a level of conversion, that person usually backslides, falls into lust, can never make it and maintain the, pre the renewing in the second chamber. They always go back to the salvation chamber to salvage the first chamber. Listen, you, the enemy's going to try to kick you out. He's going to do everything he can to get you out of that second chamber, the holy place, because that's where renewing and regeneration is maintained. Amen? He's always going to... And how does he do that? His greatest thing through deception is emotion. People making emotional decisions all the time. Woe is me. Nobody loves me. This, this, and whatever. Oh, I love this. Lust. Amen? All of these things that emotions bring to people, the enemy has access. Remember, the enemy will always have access to your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, imaginations. That's why it must be sealed and protected by the anointing of Christ. It must be completely converted so that you are sold out, S-O-U-L-E-D. Amen. Verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the... So the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right in rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is what? Pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is what? Clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than a honeycomb, uh, honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is what? Great reward. Great reward. I'm telling you, great reward in renewing because it will produce fruits of righteousness. We should live a life of acts of righteousness. Amen? It is rewarded by God. Acts of disobedience is rewarded by the devil. Acts of righteousness is rewarded by the God. How many of y'all know the devil can 
reward you too. Amen. Oh, he can give you fame and fortune. Just sell out your soul to him, which many people have. He can do all kinds of things. Many be believers have turned from God to serve in Satan. And they've regretted it. Philippians 1. Philippians chapter 1. The renewing. Verse 7, Philippians 1, 7. Uh, 1, 9, I'm sorry. Let's speak it. Therefore God also has highly exalted him, and I'm in the wrong chapter. And verse 9, <laughs> uh, chapter 1, right? Okay, I'm on the right page here. Verse 9, In this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all what? In what? Wait a minute, two things are important. In knowledge. That means knowing him. Knowing him. And in what? All discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge and choose what is pleasing God and what is displeasing God. What is clean, what is unclean. What is holy, what is unholy? Does everybody get it? That is discernment. In verse 10, that you may, what? Approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has come become that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to the, all the rest that my chains are in Christ, and that most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word with what? Without fear. Wow, without fear. So he says, abound in the knowledge of Christ and discernment. That's the ability to judge and choose what pleases God and what displeases God. Ability to approve and promote and protect the things that are of God. You and I, with the knowledge that God has given us and the discernment, should be able to have the ability to approve, to promote, to protect the things of God because of the renewing, that new state of being of the renewing and his righteousness. Because that can't happen without that renewing. There must be a constant renewing all the time. Remember, we live in a world where we're constantly pressed. No matter where you look, no matter what you see, and no matter what you hear, it is influenced by demonic forces. We are hard-pressed everywhere, everywhere, at your work, no matter what. People are carrying demonic forces, and they don't even know it. And when those spirits come in, they'll speak to you. Voice of the stranger. We've got to come out of a life of self and under a life of Christ. That only comes by renewing all the time. Remember, that's a positional place in the second chamber. It's called renewing. Amen? Oh, praise God. Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40. <clears throat> Verse 
When there's a renewing, you want to renew yourself every morning with prayer. Amen? You want to disconnect yourself from the world every day. It's not a one-time event. It's an everyday event. Every day is a brand new day. What your obedience is today is waiting for you tomorrow. What your disobedience is today is waiting for you tomorrow. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Somebody there? Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary? His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, but the young men shall be utter, and young men shall utterly fail, fall. But those who what? Those who what? Wait. That means endure, seek after. Those who wait on the Lord shall do what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings with wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In other words, they're going to make it home. And they will have souls with them. Because they're not being swayed. They're not servants of man. They're servants of God. They're not pleasers of man. They're pleasers of God. They depart from evil. They come out from among and they refuse to touch anything that's unclean or agree with it. They only want to approve what God has approved of and they want to disapprove what God disapproves of. That's a totally different thing. Why? Because they wait on the Lord. They are endurers, they are seekers, and they're pursuers of his presence. And that's how people become strengthened. Psalm 16. In verse 11, Psalm 16 and verse 11. In this renewing, in this presence, in the second chamber, he says that he will show us the path of life. In verse 11, he will show you the path of life. He'll show you. He'll establish your steps and your thoughts. He's going to show you. That means that you've got to have relationship with him for him to show you. He will show you the paths of life in his presence is what? Fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. And at his right hand are what? Pleasures for ne forevermore. That is prosperity. That is provision. Everything comes from the presence of God. The more you're in his presence, the more things happen. The more he arranges people. He arranges things. See, there's over legions of angels working on your behalf or God. See, so many times we tie the hands of God by not getting in his presence, by not praying, by not warfaring. God is always trying to bring us to that place where he wants to say, that's my child. Just like Job. Come on. Think about what happened to Job. Job said, that's my son. The Lord said, that's my son, Job. Why? Well, he said, Satan, hey, come here. Now, God wanted to go after Satan. Do you understand this? God wanted to slap Satan in the head. So what did he do? He said, I want you to go after Job. What do you think of my servant, Job? God knew the end, didn't he? But Satan didn't. So he says, why don't you go after him? I'll, I, no, man, what do you mean? He's got a hedge of protection. He's got, you bless him with everything. Lift his protection. Well, how did Job maintain protection? Because he sacrificed animals every day. He was obedient to what God had showed him already. So Job's protection was because he was the wealthiest man in the world. He was blessed. But he was the humblest man in the world. And so God protected him because Job had cattle and sheep and everything that he needed so that he could make shed blood every day for sacrifice. And God put a head of protection around him. 
So the first thing that the Lord allowed Satan to do was to kill all of his livestock. So Job no longer could have protection. Does everybody get it? And then Satan went after him. But the end result was he never cursed God. He lost it all. Children, everything. Lost everything. But then at the end, God restored it double. Double portion. How would you like to be one that the Lord can say, have you considered my servant? Most of us, no, not me. Don't do it to me. Because you lack second chamber. See, but if you live in the second and third chamber, you don't care. Because you know victory has already been established. You just got to maintain the presence of God. <laughs> oh, glory. Psalm 16. Oh, we did that already. Praise God. Okay, let's close at Colossians 11. Or Colossians 3, sorry. Colossians 3. The renewing. Oh, yes. Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Is everybody there? So the first chamber is salvage. Second chamber is renewing. Third chamber is victory. In verse 1, let's speak it together. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, your desires, which are, on, which are on the earth, where there is fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you ourselves have put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is what? Renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is in all and is all. Now, this is powerful. We all want the anointing, I hope. Because if you don't want the anointing, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> we want the anointing. Well, it takes death to self. It takes a battle to fight to get into God's presence. Amen? And it takes a battle to endure to maintain that presence. But that's our responsibility every single day. It's not a one-time event or a one-time moment. It's a constant. Amen? That's where victory is. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We ask again today that the seed of renewing would be refreshed to us and brought to remembrance that we may endure, seek your presence, fight for your presence, live in your presence, walk in your presence, be filled with your presence, and be victorious for your glory. Amen.